Station, 1370 WOCA. Okay, 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this somewhat overcast Wednesday. John Fuller is in the studio. You you, you can't really sue the, the God about the weather. You can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. But, 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 <laughs> I think it's hard to get a, a good remedy for that. Yeah. Uh, but John is here to answer your normal uh, legal questions. He is an attorney at the law firm of Fuller & Fuller here in Ocala. And the number right now to call John is 622-9622. Today is Wednesday, February 4th, 2015. Sometimes John can't be here because of uh, a court uh, obligations, etc. Um, but if you're listening on Wednesday, February 4th, you are listening to a live show, and we encourage you to call early. Again, the number is 622-9622. Good morning, John. Uh, good morning, Larry. Good morning to the folks who are listening. It's good to be back. Uh, had a uh, court conflict last week that uh, prevented me from being here, but uh, I miss seeing you. miss talking to our friends who listen in, and I uh, hope everybody has had a good week and uh, managed to stay dry and or warm <laughs> as the weather weather may dictate, uh, but it is good to uh, to be back. Are, are recordings allowed in the courtroom normally? I mean, I may, the judge might make an exception. But well, they're different, they're different courtrooms. Uh, you can bring a court reporter at your expense, or uh, the, the uh, cases that need to be reported have an electronic recording system in the courthouse that rec- records what's said in the courtroom, and then you would have to go get that tape and have it transcribed oh, at but your it, expense. But, but it, it's illegal. In my opinion, uh, well, you just can't go into a courtroom and, and, and in all cases use your own private personal tape recorder. Or no. like the phones have recorders on them now. Well, you'd have to get you'd have to take that out with the judge, but uh. I've, I've not usually seen that happen because <laughs> what, the, what the court wants to ensure is that whatever record of the proceeding that goes on in court is accurate. And it's not subject to being edited, deleted, uh, uh, quality control. I mean, you work in radio. You probably know more about this than I do in terms of you can can have a great tape or CD or whatever, but there can be glitches in it. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. And and you can edit anything to sound like anything else. Absolutely. I've had had experts testify about uh, audio tapes that people allegedly made, and they could show where it had been. And spliced. I mean, you have a phone call, and I encourage the callers to call as early as possible. The first one is up now. The number is 622-9622. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with John Fuller. Uh, good morning, John. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm okay. This is Mike. Hey, Mike. I have a question concerning uh, privacy. With the uh, advent of the new uh, drones and communications like that, uh, a person's privacy. If someone flies a drone over your house and uh, take pictures of your house, or taking in consideration that drones may even uh, carry explosives or you know all kinds of uh, of uh, different devices, do you have a right to shoot it down or to protect yourself if you think that you feel threatened? Uh, somehow by that drone, or does anyone have a right to fly it anywhere uh, they want to fly it? I'm, I'm going to hang up and listen to your comments on that type of privacy. Well, Mike, that is just an absolutely great question. And uh, so, as so often happens, sometimes technology provides or produces issues and potential problems that the law has not addressed. Uh, Because up until just recently, to my knowledge, at least in the civilian population, uh, that technology really didn't exist. Um, It is obviously becoming more prevalent now. You read about it in the paper. You can go online and buy these sophisticated drone models. And the uh, legislature and the administrative agencies, uh, the FAA and so forth, and so on are just now, as far as I understand, and I've not researched this exhaustively by
by any means, uh, coming to grips with it. Right. Not only from the standpoint of, of your privacy rights, as you asked the question, but also from a safety factor, because some of those drones without governors could go up to several thousand feet and could interfere uh, with uh, right. general aviation airplanes or if around an airport, even with uh, 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 commercial carriers. So, uh, uh, you know, you, you do have certain rights of privacy, but they don't extend unlimited, and someone usually does not have the expectation of a privacy uh, in their backyard from a plane flying over. <laughs> is where do you have reasonable expectation? So the law has not answered that question yet, but it's a very good question. Wow. Wow. And, and I've heard of people who say, you know, if I see a drone, I am going to shoot it down. I've heard well, yeah, now that's another part of the of the question yeah. that I didn't touch on. But no, I would not recommend that you go out and shoot it down <laughs> because you could inadvertently uh, hurt your neighbor or somebody next door. Sure. Yeah. And, and that is not a, a, uh, a, a good remedy uh, to, to do that. And I certainly don't recommend it. I believe that there's legislation pending in this upcoming legislative session that is to address uh, drone use and drone, drone restrictions and so forth and so on but wow. uh, that remains to be seen and you have another phone call thank you for calling and for waiting you're on the air now with John Fuller uh, yes how y'all doing this morning good morning thanks for uh, calling we got a quick question um, I had some uh, supposedly dentist work done uh, last year and uh, this um bank well work with the dentist office uh i wrote a check and they didn't roll the check to me they wrote the check to the dentist office but i didn't have the work done and now they want to uh take me to court for a judgment and how can i go by handling that do i need a lawyer or do i need a right to the people that are trying to bring me to court or how do i go by handling that well, I don't know enough information to advise you, uh, and I would not give specific legal advice. Certainly, consulting in a in a personal uh, conference with a lawyer is always the way to get the most meaningful opinion. Uh, I don't know what you know. Like most things, the the, the specifics are spelled out in some type of paperwork, and somebody needs to look at what uh, arrangement you made with the bank what arrangement you had with the dentist, whether or not there was an assignment, uh, whether or not there was a bill. Uh, it, it, there, there are just too many variables there that I could not could not uh, answer your question o o on, a, on a show like this. But I thank you for calling in. All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you. And the phone number is 622-9622 if you'd like to uh, call with a question. Yeah, that, that sounds like something you need to sit and, and chat a little bit about. Well, you need to, you need to find out what the paperwork is. Yeah. I mean, the bank isn't going to loan money without paperwork. Uh, where did the money go after the note was signed? Yeah, yeah. What was the interrelationship between uh, the patient and the dentist? Uh, was there any assignment? Uh, they're, they're just, you know, it's it's way too uh, much of a uh, involved to try to give a meaningful right. opinion mm -hmm. in a in a show such as this that that tries to talk about general legal principles. And you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with John Fuller. Yeah, I'd like to ask you a question. So sure, good. Good morning. Hello. Yes. Uh, I have uh, I had a. a, a uh, pain, very severe pain, and uh, so I went to the emergency room to see what the pain come from, take an X-ray or ultrasound or something. They managed to uh, uh, drowse me and put me in, uh, in a hospital, which I believe it was all to, put, uh, you know, a uh, lot of money to Medicare or whatever. And they did all kinds of stuff that I, I, I don't even know about. I, I didn't know anything and put all kinds of lies and all kinds of things. And, I, and I, so I had to leave myself because I still had the pain all the time. And I had to, uh, to leave and come back and then go to another doctor that I paid for myself uh, just to know what the pain come from. And it, it was from a kidney stone or, or gold stone, whatever that was. And I never know anything about it. And, and if it was from that, 
why they have to leave me in the hospital and put me in the hospital and I never know for what where I was there for. Well, I, I'm not going to be able to help you with that, ma'am. Uh, if you think that you were mistreated in terms of medical care, you need to talk with a lawyer who specializes in medical malpractice cases, uh, and you can get a referral to that by calling the Florida Bar uh, Attorney Referral Hotline, which is 1-800-342-342. 8011 and I wish you good luck. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Uh, we have to take a little break and we'll be right back with John Fuller. Your questions are an important part of the show and so far we've had some good ones today. Uh, so we would love some more. The phone number is 622-9622. We'll be back in just about a minute and a half. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Say boating is no accident. It'll be mostly cloudy today with a few showers crossing the area. Highs anywhere from the mid-60s in the northernmost part of the zone to 74 in the southernmost part. Cloudy tonight with periods of rain and a thunderstorm. Lows ranging from 52 in the northernmost part of the zone to 62 along the coast. Tomorrow becoming windy and cooler with rain in the morning. Then clouds will break for some sun in the afternoon. Highs in the mid to upper 60s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Stay with us and sleep better at the Sleep Inn and Suites of Ocala Bellevue. Located next door to Don Garlitz Museum and a few minutes from Florida Horse Park, our award-winning newly refreshed Sleep Inn and Suites offers comfy, clean rooms, free, fast Wi-Fi, and service with a smile. Start your day with a deluxe hot breakfast and unwind in our heated outdoor pool. Our convenient 24-hour fitness and business centers allow you to stay on track whether you're here to play or to work. That's Sleep Inn and Suites, Ocala Bellevue. Proud sponsor of College of Central Florida Basketball. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. All right, uh, 12 and a half minutes before 11 o'clock. John Fuller is here from the law firm of Fuller & Fuller. He's here to answer your questions. Today's date is Wednesday, February 4th, 2015. So go ahead and call if you want to have a question addressed by John Fuller. The number is 622-9622. Yeah, sometimes, it, it, I mean, you, I think we, the general public, we just don't even know sometimes where to turn. So if, if nothing else, I think calling in to you For sure. will at least give us some direction. Well, I'm so happy to do that, and that's one of the the reasons that we do this show is is not only to uh, uh, advise people who may be listening of the areas we practice in, and if they have a personal injury or wrongful death case or a commercial business case or a Social Security disability claim or a very major complicated family law matter, uh, the, we'd be happy to set them an appointment. In other areas, uh, number one, a lot of the questions are so complex and convoluted that you can't give a meaningful opinion over the phone or on a radio show and you have to consult with a uh, with a lawyer and you do have another phone call good morning you're on the air with john fuller yes uh, good morning mr fuller good morning how are you sir uh very good thank you uh this time of year with taxes and that uh, do you know whether or not uh lawyer fees are tax deductible well that um, first of all let me let me put out the the caveat that I always give, uh, I am not a tax lawyer. And tax law is a very specialized area, and I do not give tax advice. I will tell you that I am generally aware that attorney's fees can be tax deductible under certain circumstances, but you should talk with your tax advisor about that, either a tax lawyer or a CPA. Uh, a couple of areas that I am aware of is that if it's in the family law matter and if it is uh, in connection with an alimony claim, the portion of the fee that is attributed to pursuing the alimony claim can be deductible. Uh, in estate cases, if the estate is sued and the estate retains counsel uh, to defend the, the estate to preserve the assets, uh, the expense of the attorneys under certain circumstances, I understand, can be deductible against any estate taxes that might be paid or payable. Again, I do, I do not practice tax law, I do not give tax advice, uh, and I encourage you, 
if you have a question about a specific incident, get the details, make an appointment with your certified public accountant or someone who specializes in tax law. Yeah, uh, just a, a, a second question. I, maybe I shouldn't be asking it for what for you just what you said, but do you know if if your winnings in the case are uh, you have to pay taxes on those? If it is a personal injury case and you make a recovery uh, for your damages, your your medical bills, your pain and suffering, your lost wages, your future medicals, your future pain and suffering, anything that you recover in a personal injury case is not taxable to you. Oh, now, wow. when you get that award, uh, whether it's a settlement or a verdict that you recover on, when you invest that money, if you take it and put it in a money market account or something like that, the interest that that money earns is taxable. But if you're hurt in a car wreck and you get a settlement, that money is not taxable because it's not income, it's to make you whole. Yeah. All right, good question. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Thanks for calling. Thank you. The, the number is 622-9622. Got some good calls today. Got nine minutes left, so plenty of time to uh, pick John's brain with something else uh, if you want to call in right now. And so so tax law is a specialized. We, we, you would go to somebody, I guess, if you really had some hard core issues with taxes, right? I, I refer everybody. And, and in my cases that involve business, commercial, complicated family law matters with the business uh, and financial overlays, right, right. I associate a very competent forensic CPA in every case to analyze and advise on, on the tax aspect. And I refer everybody with a tax problem or a tax question to a tax lawyer. You, you mentioned something about a, a state. I have a question from the news. The Robin Williams case, he had, um, I guess, written up a, had drawn up a, a, a will. The, the children were supposed to get whatever. The, the third wife now, the, the, the wife he was married to when he died, um, is contesting that. Can you contest somebody's will? I thought that was in stone. No, you can you can argue really uh, that that uh, about uh, a will. You can the, some of the arguments that you can make is that when the person made the will, he lacked what they call testamentary capacity, meaning that he did not appreciate what he was doing because of oh, either wow. because of mental illness, uh, medication, uh, head injury. Uh, whatever. Uh, you can also seek uh, to challenge it on the grounds that the will was procured uh, by one of the beneficiaries, by undue influence, by manipulation, uh, by coercion, and that it wasn't done of his own free will. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, there, there's a lot of litigation over uh, probate cases, and and tragically. The bigger the estate, the more likely you will find heirs or, yeah. or, or people who are just trying to uh, get a windfall profit by making a claim in the estate uh, without any validity, but uh, to uh, to take a shot at it. So when Mrs. Helmsley, I can't remember her name, when she when she left her money to her dog, I think it was, somebody else could have said, you, you know what, that's a crazy thing to do. I'm going to challenge this, and the dog could have been denied the money <laughs> well you'd have to prove that that wasn't her intent i mean look anybody oh, has really? the right to do whatever they want to do with their money yeah uh they could go down the street throwing it out of the car they could burn it they could give it to charity they could uh they could do anything they want to the question is not was their choice what society deems to be the norm or what would be something that you or I would think would be appropriate is whether or not that person had testamentary capacity. And uh, if they did, the fact that they chose to do something with their money uh, that seems bizarre doesn't in and of itself prove lack of testamentary capacity. Right, right. People have a right to do stupid things. Right. 
So, so would you take a case like that, or would you? No. no, or you wouldn't even take it. You mean on behalf of the dog, or on behalf <laughs> of? Uh, uh, I mean, on behalf of, like, in, in the Robin Williams case, on behalf of the wife. The wife. Well, I don't says, know enough facts about okay. it. You know, to, to, to decide that. Uh, but I have I, I have either, done probate litigation, uh, and and it's very uh, it's very expensive so, and it's very contentious. So, if you do your will alone, then there's nobody there to witness that you are of sound mind. So there, it sounds like the recommendation is if you want your will to be solid, go to an attorney and well, have it. Of course. It. Now, the state, the, the, you know, Florida recognizes what's called a holographic will, which is a handwritten will. But in order for, you know, to be, to avoid, uh, to, in as much as possible, you need to have a will that is done. And, and in order, and wills have to be very specifically uh, executed, they have to be signed in the presence of two witnesses who are in the presence of each other who attest before a notary public that they have witnessed the signature of the person uh, and and if there's any question at all I don't do wills anymore I did 30 years ago oh, okay. but if there's any question at all I would get a letter from the doctor uh, about the medication and the timing and when they were lucid and lucid meaning that they know they're oriented as to time space person and yeah, they yeah. know who the benefits of their bounty are their children or grandchildren or friends or charities and they're aware of what their assets are and then I have a videographer from a professional court reporter come in there and videotape the signing of the will and they're a litany of questions that a will lawyer ought to ask them Makes sense. Uh, yeah. and 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 if there's any question about it I document it medically and I put it all together in the will package now, I don't do that anymore okay that was 30 years ago when I did wow. it, okay wow. I uh, you know you cannot be all things to all people in the practice of law any more than you can in the practice of medicine you wouldn't go to right. have heart surgery by a dermatologist uh, no, you no. know that's that, that's the way things have evolved uh, when I started practicing law in 1973 lawyers usually and and generally uh, did all areas of the law uh, just like your old family doctor used to deliver right, your baby, right. take your appendix out, set your broken <laughs> arm, right. uh, you know, treat your uh, head cold. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just gotten too complex that it's impossible for one person, one professional, to be all things to all people. Well, and, and uh, but I, just, I mean, the conclusion, I guess, is if you want your your will to be honored without anybody questioning your sanity or whatever, your lucidity of whatever it's called, then then get go to an attorney. Well, it makes it stronger if the yeah. will is done in strict compliance with the rules yeah. of, of 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 preparing a, a wills, estates, and trusts. Uh, it doesn't make it bulletproof. Uh, people can make an argument and can sue the estate and make any allegation they want to for the price of going down to the clerk's office and paying the filing fee. So to change the subject, do we have a new judge in town now? After the, the elections in November, didn't we vote a new judge in? Uh, we may. Uh, I'm not sure. Who, who um, I can't think. Weren't they right. sworn in in January? I uh, thought. I thought. I, yeah, probably so. I'm, I'm trying to think uh, off the top of my head. I mean, what's that? What's that like? I uh, t uh, we have. I honestly, we have. A, we have a large number of county court judges and circuit court judges throughout the Fifth Judicial Circuit. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to uh, recall. I thought it was a lady. Whom that may be? Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. I uh, Judge Ann Melinda Craggs. Okay. Okay. And and uh, she is doing an excellent job. She practiced family law for many, many years. Ah. She was appointed by the governor uh, to fill uh, the term of a, of a judge who had retired. Okay. And uh, Judge Craggs is very competent. Uh, she's very experienced. She has very good judicial demeanor. And uh, I am very grateful that we have not only Judge Craggs, these comments that I'm making would apply to all of the judges that we have here in Ocala. I think we are exceedingly lucky uh, that we have a group of very, very fine, knowledgeable, honorable judges who try very hard to do the right thing. Now, they don't always, you know, our litigation system is an adversary proceeding. 
That means somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. Yeah, right, no right. one likes to lose. Right. I don't like to lose, but that's part of the system. And as long as you get a judge who gives you a fair hearing and makes a ruling, uh, that's all you can ask for. And if you think there is a judicial error, that's what the appellate court is for. Okay, John, we, have, we have good judges. Real quickly, what's your phone number? Uh, the number at the office is 352-547-4292. And our toll-free number is 855 855- Five three four two five six five. The law firm's Fuller and Fuller. And call us if you need that repeated. Thank you, John. Thank you. We'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. Militant group Amon retaliating by executing two prisoners. Inside the country, there's a lot of concern about getting drawn into a larger regional war. And that doesn't only apply for Jordan, but for a lot of other countries already. The UAE, one of the most hyped uh, members of this international coalition, uh, they have already stopped for about a month now uh, all flights over Iraq and Syria targeting ISIS. Fox's Connor Powell. On Capitol Hill, the president's defense secretary nominee asked about his policy with regard to the terror group. Our ends with respect to uh, ISIL needs to be its lasting defeat. Ashton Carter at his Senate confirmation hearing. NTSB investigators will probe the deadly crash of a commuter train into an SUV during rush hour yesterday just north of New York City. The driver of the vehicle died along with five others. Fox News. We report you Last time your battery gave out, you were stuck on the side of the road showing the kids new and interesting ways to expand their vocabulary. So before that happens again, come into Napa, pick up a qualifying Napa battery, and get a $10 prepaid Visa card by mail. $10 buys a lot of soap. And with the way your kids are talking now, you'll need it. Conquer the job with Napa Know How. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores, offer expires 2 15 Superstorms, road closures, flooding, airport snowed in. If you travel for work like I do, news like that can ruin your whole day. It did mine until I discovered Citrix GoToMeeting online meeting software. With GoToMeeting, you can meet from anywhere using your computer, tablet, or smartphone. No expensive travel required. And with HD video, you simply turn on your webcam and it's just like being in the same room, which means you can stay productive no matter what the news brings. Visit GoToMeeting.com and download our free 30-day trial. It's time for Farm and Ranch Headlines on the Southeast Agnet. I'm Tyron Spearman reporting. The new farm bill's got a different requirement this time that farmers need to know about. This change requires a farmer to have a highly erodible land conservation and wetland conservation certification. To be eligible for premium support on your federal crop insurance, this certificate is also required. The 2014 Farm Bill continues the requirement that producers adhere to conservation compliance guidelines to be eligible for most program administered by the uh, FSA and NRCS. This includes most financial assistance, including the market assistant loan program of which Peanuts is involved. It also includes the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, the Conservation Stewardship Program, and other conservation programs by NRCS. The deadline, you got a little bit of time, will be June the 1st, 2015. When a farmer completes and submits the uh, AD1026 certification, FSA and NRCS will review it and make any changes. FSA also recently released a revised copy, which is available on the website at USDA. We are ambitious. We are proud of our work. We are Kubota. With Kubota's economical MX-4800 and MX-5200 utility ag tractors, we simply get more done. Full of big features, Kubota MX Series tractors are packed with up to 54.7 horsepower Kubota diesel engines, powerful transmission options, and more. Test drive one today during the More Power to You sales event. Fueling your ambition, we are Kubota. Coming up February the 5th, the Georgia, Florida Soybean and Small Grain Expo will be held at the Perry Agri Center in Perry, Georgia. This is sponsored by the Georgia Crop Improvement Association in cooperation with Florida. It'll be at the Miller Murphy Howard Building starting at 9 a.m. I'm Tyron Spribman for Southeast Agnet. Well, the holiday rush is over, and it's time.